Hanan Morshid heads up sustainability for OCP in Morocco. The state-run company makes fertilizer to feed global agriculture. Hanan's leading efforts to get OCP carbon neutral by 2040, deploying all sorts of disruptive tech and innovation. But she faces a big question going forward. How can the company maximize food production to meet growing demands while still driving up the sustainability vision? Anan Mourshid, thank you very much indeed for joining us on Disrupted here in Morocco. Thank you for hosting me, it's a pleasure. Now, sustainability is a word that we hear lots said about in today's disrupted world. First of all, I want to just start off by defining sustainability. What is it for you? What does it mean? For me, sustainability is a way of living, a way of thinking. Uh, it's being conscious and uh, absolutely in harmony with the communities around you, with the planet, with people, and shaping a sustainable and sure future for your children and for the youth. Um, but how did you land the job at OCP that you're now in and, and what's driving you to go to work every day? I definitely started my uh, journey as an engineer within OCP in the production field. So I was a chemical engineer in charge of production of fertilizers, uh, power plants, etc. And I spent a lot of years on this and this really uh, helped me to see reality on the ground and to be more conscious about the impacts on our environment, on our communities, and how we can produce with a sustainable manner, how we can be efficient. I started also being aware about the climate change impacts, the climate issue, and this was, uh, let's say, uh, theoretical for me in the beginning, science, etc. but now we are starting to see reality and real effects on the ground. And last but not least, it was also because of our leadership. Our chairman is uh, really uh, pushing for the cultural change, for embedding sustainability in our way of thinking, in our daily work. Now as a business, OCP makes fertilizer um, out of phosphate that you mine from the land uh, here in Morocco. Um, a lot of water, a lot of energy consumption goes into making fertilizer. Ammonia is also part of the process. Uh, many people listening to this interview today, they might be thinking, well, how can a business like yours ever be truly sustainable because of its very nature? I mean, what would you say to those people? I will say that today we consider ourselves the custodians of phosphates for the whole world since we are in charge of the biggest reserves in the world and we are feeding the planet, we are working to improve soil health and to provide nutrients to the soil and to enhance the soil quality and so this is the essence of business and sustainability business and since we consider our mission a planetary mission and a humanitarian mission and working for food security etc, we invested a lot to make sustainability a core component of our strategy. We work also on providing sustainable roadmaps for water consumption, for energy, for resource consumption, etc. And it seems to be okay. Over the years, consumers have showed a real interest in organic foods. A lot of people are buying that around the world. Does that not worry you then that your business is basically not going to be relevant going forward? Today our business is soil health, so we are working on soil health and we bring nutrients to give back to the soil what has been taken by the agricultural intensification. So bringing phosphorus and even applying direct phosphate to the soil is not against the principles of organic fertilization. We are open to mineral fertilization, to organic fertilization. We are working on customizations. One way of customization is reducing synthetic nutrients and and enhancing the content of phosphorus in our products. We are also working on a combination of organic and mineral fertilizer. We call them organomineral fertilizers. But unfortunately, the amount of organic raw materials that exist in the world that is not sufficient to feed all the need of the planet in terms of fertilization. It's a very small amount, so we cannot uh, bring all the need of nutrients from the organic fertilizers. You're a female leader in what has been traditionally a very male-dominated sector. What challenges has that posed for you? What challenges do you face today? 
The biggest challenge is uh, stereotypes, uh, the fact that um, many people think this is an area of men and women don't necessarily have their place there. Uh, many women around me are also fighting against this kind of uh, perceptions. Uh, for me, I took the challenge from the beginning, since I'm a chemical engineer, I wanted really to be on the field. And uh, I had the chance to do it within OCP because it's a very supportive company. Our chairman is the first one who pushed for diversity and inclusion and 30% of our management are female, 60% uh, of the new hires are women in the sites, in the mining and chemical facilities. And it's not thanks to a positive discrimination policy, it's only based on merit, because merit today has the chance to show up and to succeed. I guess one of the other challenges that you face in the work that you do is that you're working in a sector that has probably stood still for a long time and now you're trying to transform it in terms of this sustainability vision that you have. It can't be easy, right? I mean, you must face some sort of level of resistance somewhere. They are technical sometimes when we deal with climate change, when we deal with water, water scarcity, when we deal with the shifting the food systems, shifting the agricultural practices. These are huge subjects that need the participation of many stakeholders, internal and external. This is a challenge, but we have the roadmaps and the clarity we need just to set up the road. Now, the world right now is full of disruption, as you know. Um, there are those growing fears around climate change, the war in Ukraine that's had an impact on supply chains, there's the energy crisis, uh, food security, uh, the fallout of the pandemic. I mean, the list goes on at the moment. What do you think all of these disruptive things that are going on right now, what do you think they mean for sustainability going forward? There was a big wake-up call for all the world, uh, starting from the COVID crisis when we had a lot of challenges regarding the supply chains, disruption around the world, the costs, uh, availability of raw materials, etc. But it showed also how our supply chain is quite agile, it's innovative, and all the investments that we made early before uh, were very relevant because we invested in digitalization, in diversification of our supply chain sources, etc. And this helped us really to face and to respond to all this crisis. Now as part of your sustainability vision at OCP you've set the goal of being carbon neutral by 2040. Why 2040 and why not sooner? Lots of our challenges are linked to the need of technology, to technology development, to R&D and to be realistic it cannot be achieved earlier than that. I mean how are you going to try to work as a company within your sector to try to get things moving maybe a bit quicker? We need to disrupt with the current business model, with the current models to make the shift happen. This is very important. Innovation is central to achieve carbon neutrality. Why? Because first of all, we need to move from proofs to scale up. So innovation is very important to make the scale up happen. When we talk about green hydrogen, we know how to produce green hydrogen, but we don't have still the model to scale it up and to feed it with clean energy all the day because you need to deal with intermittency of uh, solar, wind, etc. So innovation is coming to fix that. But also, uh, very important, innovation is important to improve costs because sometimes we have the solutions but the costs are not there yet. So the business model is not possible at the moment. Innovation has the role to disrupt with the existing uh, way of production and also to improve costs and to make things happen in the future in an efficient manner. And you use an awful lot of water uh, to make the fertilizers that you do. How are you already investing in tech and innovation to kind of cut down on your water usage or use other supplies of water? Because at the end of the day, you're in Morocco, right? And this is a country where the threat of drought, well, it's not a threat, it's real, right? Absolutely, absolutely. This is the most material and central topic to us at the moment because we are facing a big crisis in terms of water scarcity and we've been early mover on this subject before. This is why now we are not facing any disruption links to this. So we started by producing our own water many years ago. Uh, we have already invested in three wastewater treatment plants. We recover urban wastewater in three towns in our country and we treat the water and we recycle it, we use it in our mining facilities. We also invested in uh, desalination plants. It was uh, the biggest desalination plant in our country with 25 million cubic meters per year. And today, 30% of the water that we consume is produced water and waste recovered water. So 70% still comes out of the main system? Yes, but we have a very accelerated 
accelerate the program to cover the 100% of our consumption in two, three years maximum. And what are you doing around uh, energy? I mean, what are you trying to do to use alternative sources or to cut your energy use? So today uh, we work a lot on energy efficiency. We already uh, recover all the steam that we produce in our factories to produce our own energy. We call this cogeneration and we even invested a lot in what we call heat recovery system to maximize the energy efficiency. We also feed our mines with wind energy today and 86% of our electrical consumption is clean coming from wind energy and cogeneration. Three out of four mines are fully covered by wind energy and we have a big solar program ongoing to complete the remaining need of OCP but also to support the new developments of green hydrogen etc. And how about the circular economy more widely in the business? What are you doing to try to reduce waste in the production process of fertilizer? So what we generate in our maintenance and production activities, we recycle the maximum, up to 90% of our waste, industrial waste is recovered. And we have also a strong R&D roadmap to make all the components of phosphate viable. We call this program Hacking Phosphate, so we are working on recovering fluorine, recovering all the gypsum coming from phosphate, etc. And use it in roads, use it in building materials, use it in agriculture, because it's very relevant to correct salinity of soils in our country. We already constructed some roads in, in, in our sites and we are working with institutions and ministries in, in our country to start building the first national roads with these materials. Maybe you can be sustainable, but can you be profitable at the same time? There is a big stereotype on this, that profit is against sustainability and sustainability and profit cannot go together. And I guess that's one of the challenges you faced, right? Yeah, but the challenges, you can turn them to opportunity and to make value from them. And this is what is happening, actually, because sustainability is profit. It has been demonstrated by many studies. There is a very famous book today known uh, it's uh, who wins cares that shows that the companies that are most sustainable are the companies that stays in, uh, in the long term and make more profit in the long term going forward with sustainability at ocp how much do you worry about that very important word transparency, but also this term that's widely used these days of greenwashing. Transparency is very important. It's a core component of sustainability. It's the beginning of the pathway. The first step is being aware of the role of transparency. And the second step is you need to communicate. This is what we do. When you give facts, informations, real on the ground, assessed by third parties. You have third parties' opinions. You have third parties' insurance. You also open to external due diligences. There's no greenwashing about that. So greenwashing for me is not a threat since you are sincere and you are reporting reality on the ground. Now you represent OCP around the world. You attend events, uh, conferences. Uh, you've even been to the UN. When you're on the world stage as the OCP sustainability boss, what are you saying about the future of sustainability? In the field of sustainability, you cannot achieve big projects and big challenges and big commitments without multi-stakeholder engagements. So these meetings and events, etc., are also very important to show your level of transparency. And when I'm representing my company, I do it in a way of telling what we do and sharing experience, but also learning from the others. Now, earlier this year, you personally won an award from the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, which was praising your leadership uh, during the pandemic that the world faced. Um, receiving that award, what has it meant to you personally? Well, this uh, award is recognising leadership in sustainability, and leadership in sustainability cannot be a result of one person. It's a teamwork, an organisation work. It's the work of OCP. So for me, I was very happy and very honoured because this, were, this award finally is recognising the efforts of all my company. I mean, what do you think makes a good leader? and How do you approach leadership? I think it's very simple. It's all about having a common sense, communicating on the same level, being able to give a vision, to set the objective, to make sense and to help people to invent this on reality. This is for me the four components of a leader. When you give sense to people around you and you have a common objective, then everything becomes very easy.
Hanan Morshid, it's been great chatting to you today. Thank you very much indeed again uh, for joining us on Disrupted. Thank you, it was a big pleasure and thank you for hosting me today.